uh, and so on. So well, let's go back to you. Um, yeah. Let's go back to that. Is it Salvia? Were you at the moment where you said that you got this what, extract from like sage or salvia, something? Salvia. So yeah. So, uh, so I had bought this stuff called Salvia thinking it was just going to be a mild version of marijuana. And I'd never in my entire life, Mormons are not allowed to uh, have stimulants or drugs of any kind. They're not allowed to um, have coffee or even tea. Uh, just Mormons mo tea. basically just keep themselves completely, um, drink water and milk essentially is what I grew up my entire life drinking. Oh, bro, that it, sucks. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Were there any loopholes? No. I, I had, at this point in my life, I had never been intoxicated in any way, not even having had uh, painkillers. So when I would, uh, I broke my ankle once, and the strongest thing that I had was ibuprofen. So I'd never even felt that feeling before. And... And my friend who, you know, did not grow up Mormon and who was a hardened, you know, army sergeant, mm -hmm. uh, he was fascinated by that. And I was fascinated by the fact that he, he had used to smoke marijuana when he was a boy before he joined the army. And he would tell me stories about smoking marijuana and he would get wistful about those days. And I would, you know, it sounded amazing to me, but I was, I was precluded from being able to do it because of my religion. And at this time, I'm a very serious Mormon. I'm a Mormon preacher. I have a, I have a congregation. I have this big, beautiful family. I've been married for 21 years, you know, uh, to, to, a, to a, a Mormon, my Mormon wife. And that's just the life that I'm going to, I've, you know, I've built my own house in Alaska, uh, where I was sent for this, um, witness protection thing that trial is long was long over but i loved alaska and i was staying so that's kind of the intersection in my life that i'm at 40 years old and i feel like a virgin of life you know i just uh, never done anything yeah so so i go and get this uh this gear and uh it's christmas day our kids all open their presents our wives go into the kitchen to get lunch ready and he gives me the high sign and we go down into the basement to where he has this gun room. And that's where I've uh, wrapped up this present for us. And we open the present together. Uh, we load the bong with, with frosty water and, uh, and, and load this huge bowl piece full of this black tar looking salvia stuff that just came in this foil wrapper. And um, I just, you know, a lot of my friendship with him was just basically proving I think to him that I was man enough to be friends with him in some ways because he was like this this army sergeant that had been everywhere and was killing people in the war and he was this badass and I was this you know Mormon guy and so in some ways I, I think I volunteered to go first because you know I didn't want to go small dicks to the salvia party and so I volunteered to go first I hit the bowl piece with the with a micro torch and just took the biggest hit that I could possibly do. I'd seen I've been watching videos on people taking bong rips and I just had hit a big manly bong rip and held it and then I felt the floor. And the best way to describe it is I felt like my molecules and the molecules in the floor no longer had anything to do with each other. And I just slid right through the floor of his basement. And there was a short sensation of falling. And then there was a sensation of falling up. And I um, fell up into a person. I found myself on the, on, the, on the deck of this little water skiing boat, coughing up water. And there were a bunch of guys surrounded me on the, on the deck of this water ski boat who were trying to sit me up and pounding my back and saying, man, we thought you drowned, you know, and we're, and, but I didn't know any of them. I was suddenly outside. I was, it was warm. It wasn't Christmas anymore. And I was just this, what I thought that that's what this salvia trip was. So I was just looking around and amazed at how real everything was. I mean, it was as real as this. It was just, the water was wet. I didn't know any of these guys, but they all seemed to know me and they thought that I'd been water skiing and that I was this different person. And I looked down and I looked slightly different, but it's hard to tell. And, uh, 
And I just start laughing. I just start laughing and telling all these guys that none of this is real and that I'm having a salvia trip and I'm, you know, I'm in uh, witness protection in Alaska and I'm in my friend's basement and it's Christmas time. And the, I'm saying this stuff to these guys that as I start to tell them this stuff, they get this very worried look on their face. And they ju they're just like, holy shit. And they, they, they take the water ski boat back to the, to the dock. They don't even take the time to load it onto the trailer. They just, we, we just all jump into their pickup truck and they drive me to this urgent care facility where I go in and they tell the doctor they're like, hey, our friend was water skiing with us. You know, he fell off his board and was floating face down for a while. By the time we could circle back with the boat and pick him up, he probably had his face underwater for about three minutes. And now he doesn't remember any of us. He says that, you know, he lives in Alaska and that he's Mormon and that he's in witness protection and that, and that it's Christmas time. And the doctor's like, huh, well, that's, you know, so they shine lights in my eyes and they have me cross my legs and hit my knee with a rubber hammer and they test all of my, you know, just they test my blood oxygen and they just do all of this, the rudimentary things to make listen to my lungs. And the, the doctor says, well, he's fine medically and true medical amnesia is, is really rare, almost unheard of. So he'll probably remember everything by morning. So take him home and put him to bed. He hasn't got a concussion. And if it, and if it persists, call us tomorrow. So they take me. I'm still freaking, it's been hours now at this point. It's been hours. I'm one, I'm just, I can't believe how long this salvia trip is lasting. I'm like wondering what's happening, you know, in Alaska, you know, what, what my family is saying. Am I missing Christmas dinner? Are my Mormon, is my Mormon family freaking out? Because I've been, surely they've discovered now that I've been doing drugs if it's gone on for five hours. So my new friends, none of whom I remember, but all of whom claim that they went to school with me my entire life, take me back to this shitty little apartment that I apparently live in and use the keys that were in my jeans to unlock the door, take me into this little apartment where there are my belongings, you know, with, with clothes that fit me, pictures of me, with some of them with these guys on the wall, old yearbooks, and they just say, okay, we'll see you tomorrow, try to remember us, ha ha ha, and they leave, and I just sit there on, on the couch and wait for the salvia trip to end. You know, I'm looking through old yearbooks, looking at pictures of myself and it's, but it's real. Everything is, nothing is psychedelic. There are no trippy, yeah. you know, there are no tracers. There's no colors. It's just this normal, it's just a normal fucking Tuesday. That's fucking scary. Uh, and I live in Tyler. Tyler, Texas is the name of this town. It's a place that I, it's a real town, but I had never been there before. Yeah. And it was just, and I just lived in Tyler, Texas. So I drift off to sleep on the couch, looking at yearbooks. I wake up to the sound of pounding on the door. And the, so this, the same friend that dropped me off the night before comes in and says, you didn't come to work. Come on, get dressed. We got to take you to work. He throws some clothes on me, t throws me in his pickup truck and takes me to this farm where I work uh, supervising migrant labor. And uh, I just stand there with a clipboard in my, in my hand all day long with a bemused look on my face, just telling everybody who will listen that I'm not real and they're not real and this isn't really happening. And I live in Alaska and I'm Mormon and, and I'm in witness protection. And so this, all this crazy shit. And they all just kind of try to laugh it off. But I'm starting to get uh, you know worried that... Um, it's been a really long time. It's been now 24 hours since I've been in this trip. I'm thinking I must be in the hospital in real life. I must have had some sort of a reaction. Yeah. So he takes me home from my, from my day of work and puts me to bed again. And I sit, I sit there on top of the bed, just worried, wanting it to be over like right now, worried that what's going on, worried that I'm in a coma. Did I die? Is this limbo? You know, cause I'm a very religious person at this at this point still in my life and just before we, we move on thomas can you look up uh what was it salvia salvia and pull it up uh yeah okay this is this is a lot yeah uh, obviously Fuck. jesus man <laughs> I've and got, I've you know something. you know like when you're when you're dreaming they say like uh, name a time in a dream ever you've seen your phone do you have a phone in this? Yeah. Okay, Everything. Phone. I paid a phone. 
I fucking voted. I paid taxes. I had a fucking cable bill. I uh, it was it was Barack Obama at the time, and everything. And I and I would spend my I would spend as as the days turned into weeks, and you know, and I lived every minute of every day in this salvia trip for eight years. Look up salvia trip. Yeah. Yeah. And at this point, I had never heard of Salvia. So I had, if I had ever like done what you're doing and looked up, Sal there are stories on the internet of people getting stuck as a coat of paint on a barn for 30 years. And they feel every single day of that 30 years being stuck as a coat of paint. So in some ways I got off easy, but I didn't know anything could last that long at this point. I think it's just, you know, a mild form of marijuana and I think there's no possible way that I'm supposed to be, it doesn't, it shouldn't last eight years. Did you ever think of like trying to locate yourself? Like, yeah, like, did you ever think of trying like, to go to Alaska? Uh, I, I was, yeah. Yes. All of those things. I, I, I tried all of those things. I tried calling my house. I tried calling my old high school. I tried calling, you know, because my family had been in that little town for generations. So at one point I actually loaded my ass into an old Pinto and drove the thousand miles or so to Smithfield, Utah from Tyler, Texas, and went into this little town fully expecting to see the, the town that I'd remember for my entire life, you know, a whole hill on the graveyard with, 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 the, with, the, with the Cantwell, with Cantwell names on, on the tombstones. And none of that was, was, was accurate. I, I went into that town and it was exactly like going into a town that you'd never been to before. I was just, none of it was, re, was, was the way I remembered it. The high school was named something different. I went into the high school and asked them if I'd ever, if, if there was any record. My dad had been a school teacher at that school. They had no record of him. So it's just, so it was, was kind of like, it was kind of like you were someone else and your entire family never existed. Yes. So it was exactly as my new friends in Tyler, my, but my old friends in Tyler were telling me, they said, you had a near drowning incident. You have brain damage, my friend. We have known you your entire life. You've never been Mormon. You know, your family were Methodists and uh, you were never in witness protection. To our knowledge, you've never been to Alaska. This is just some sort of a fantasy that happened when you were without oxygen. And Everybody in this town told me this same story. Uh, you, it was, it, everybody at the grocery store would come up to me and say, I know you don't remember us because of your accident, but I was your teacher in second grade and you were a nice little boy. And my name is Mrs. Eskelson. And, you know, so everybody in this town to a person was telling me that they had remembered me for the last 40 years of my life. And faced with that, as evidence and as, and all of the evidence that I could find on the internet, everywhere else, there was no evidence of the Steve Cantwell that was involved in witness protection. And there was no evidence of my family members, you know? So eventually at about the four year mark, I slowly decided that I had imagined my entire family and my entire life and that I actually had brain damage and it caused me to forget all of my friends in this town called Tyler that loved me very much and were very patient with my, with my brain damage. But I, you know, rather than just trying to push everybody away because I thought that they were imaginary at about the halfway mark somewhere, I started to hang out with my friends and to take them up on offers to go camping and to, you know, we, we would play, we, 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 we had this little, they would play guitars and, and stuff like that after work. And we would just sort of jam and it sort of turned into a band. And I like when I, when I then when they dropped me off in my apartment in Tyler, there was a ukulele on the couch and I had not played ukulele before this, but when I picked up the ukulele, I knew how to play the ukulele. My fingers knew the places to go on the strings. I didn't know the names of any of the chords, but my fingers knew,